Hello YouTube, Joe here. Uh, it's a Sunday evening in Nashville, Tennessee, uh, down in my Joe Case Pipes workshop and thought I would do a couple things. Uh, one, I'll have to tell you that I had some help from some guys doing uh, some cleanup here. I actually cleaned up. I did not do any work in here as far as making pipes. Uh, I had an all day yesterday cleanup day and rearrange day and everything because it really needed it. I used to talk as a weatherman about accumulation of snow. Uh, in, in my workshop, I could talk about the accumulation of sawdust. That's just how bad it was. But we got it all cleaned up, and I thought I'd take you on a workshop tour here in a second after I did a, a Yabo. I'll, I'll show you one. First of all, it came in a, in a pack, and I've already opened it, of course. This is what I won, I guess, as a second prize, I think second place prize from uh, Jay's contest, Diggs HX. Uh, contest. This is his one uh, pipe rack that he made. Isn't that cool? I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times four. What, 36 pipes? Am I right on that? Is that 36? Yeah. Is that right? Okay. <laughs> 36 pipes I can put in there, so I might have to get another rack sometime. My wife doesn't know I have 36 pipes, and she's on camera here today. Got the wife on the camera. I feel like Dunhill Man UK. <laughs> doing that. You want to wave to them? You want to wave, say say hi? Yeah. Hi. Nice nails. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, okay. Thanks, Jay, so much for that. I am going to go, I'm going to put this upstairs in the office and, and put it to, to good use. Also have another Yabo here, and this one comes to me from Mark Balkovic. I finally, uh, finally got to, to get a Balkovic pipe. Mark has been, I got my case knife here, uh, keep it in the family as I say. Uh, Mark has been such a an, a great inspiration and a great mentor uh, to me. And uh, wow, it's just, uh, it's a thrill to finally get one of his pipes. And uh, open it up and here it is in the pouch. And let's make sure which way, okay, I believe it's like this. And here we go, we're gonna give you a good box opening here, Mark. And ready for this oh oh isn't that beautiful what a great looking pipe this is the OMS poker that Mark did isn't it great I love that I love his stamp I love his uh, shank work here I love the metal band and of course it's the Mark Balkovic pipe wonderful Mark wow Incredible. Love it. Wonderful draw on it. Love the rustication on there. Mark, it is uh, it is an honor to finally get one of your pipes, man. I really appreciate it. And uh, that's really cool. Okay? So there's my Yabo for now. I'll come back and throw a little bit of Frog Morton in there in just a little bit. Okay, I wanted to kind of take you on a little tour uh, of the shop now that uh, it's clean and I can show you. It's been a while since I've been able to do that. First of all, this is the basement of our home. This is one half, I guess, of the, the basement. I've got another half over there that's we're not going to show, but it's nothing but boxes and storage and stuff. Uh, but in my shop, this right here would be the the central point part of the of the shop, of any shop, and that uh, is, the, is the table saw, a nice delta table saw. I've got here and uh, I've got uh, the hood right here for dust collection and safety uh, that I use all the time. Uh, over here is my 14 inch bandsaw, a Delta uh, as well. Uh, and I uh, here I use this to cut down the, the briar after it is, has gone and been trued up right over here. That's one of the things that Mark Balkovic stressed to me one time. He said, and if you're making pipes, if you're, going, if you're going to center up the hole, the air hole in the, in the tobacco chamber and everything, you've got to start out with a true pipe. You've got to start out with true sides. You've got to have parallel and perpendicular sides there. And this right here helps me do that. This is a, a jointer. Anybody who's a woodworker knows these are blades that spin right here and you run it up against the fen uh, fence at 90 degrees there. And uh, you, you just create some true sides uh, with that. Uh, over here, this is my uh, dust collector, and I have a system here of uh, piping that runs throughout the shop. Interesting story about this today. I, uh, of course, it, it's taken a lot of moving around. A lot of the stuff was moved around and cleaned under and, and everything. And my my guys, uh, Daniel and uh, 
and Kenny and Ishmael, who helped me out, friends of mine who uh, came over and, and helped me out uh, tremendously with our work day yesterday. Uh, evidently moving it around, somehow the other kind of popped the lid a little bit. I didn't realize that, and I turned it on today, and it I noticed it was leaking, and I came over to check it out, and after a bit, it just went, poof, it blew up. And about the only thing I could compare it to were scenes that I remember seeing from 9-11. After those towers came down, all that dust, uh, I could not see in the workshop. It was that thick. And I was running through it to try to turn off the system because it kept spewing out. And I got my mask and put it on, and, and I was covered from head to toe. And I had to call one of the guys back over to come back and clean up again. At least we didn't have to move stuff around. But thank you, Daniel, for coming and re-cleaning the place. It, uh, it's uh, amazing. Oh, right over here, this is uh, one of my old lathes that I that I use now for a buffing station, my buffing wheel uh, that I have here to, to you know buff out the pipes with. Uh, this is a uh, motor here that I use for a sander, and, and I, I have a little spindle sander on the, on the end of it. And what I actually use that for is to get down into the bowl of the pipe and clean it out real good and, and sand down the briar so that uh, it can give a clean briar tobacco chamber for people if they don't want it carbonized. Uh, and most of the time, that's the way people want it now is a good clean briar. Here is a... This is a uh, drum sander that I have. It's just a, what it is is a rotating drum here and goes through and I can use it also to help true up some blocks as well. Uh, we come up a little bit to a second level and uh, over here on this side I have, uh, this is a hollow chisel mortiser. This is for uh, making those mortises for uh, to accept uh, tenons in uh, furniture kinds of things that I've built before. And uh, that's, a, that's a good piece to have. Don't use it that much right now because I'm not making cabinets and stuff uh, much anymore. This right here is my uh, chop saw, my sliding chop saw that I use uh, from time to time uh, with, with pipe making sometimes. This, uh, this, is, my, this is my tool belt uh -huh, that, I, that I wear. Got to have my tool belt. Got to have the things that you need right with you. This is my radial arm saw. I use it quite a bit in cutting off some of the shank material. Uh, this right here is a little belt sander, and uh, it's also on this side a disc sander. But I use uh, uh, this and a lot of truing that I use uh, for, for this. And this, of course, I use actually to do some carving. I got like an 80 grit belt on there, so I carve down some of the bowl sometimes on it. Back over here on this side, just some supplies. Uh, this is one of two huge uh, air filter units that I have in the shop. My wife tells me that a lot of times the air down here, it feels cleaner than it is upstairs because I got these filters running all the time, all day long when I'm down here in the shop. And it really keeps the fine dust out of the air. The heavy dust, of course, settles and I try to get it cleaned up. Got the drill press right here. Here's my Pride and Joy, the Delta MIDI lathe. Uh, this is where I uh, do most of the work on the, on the pipes, right here. And uh, as you can see, this, this has a four-jaw chuck on it, but I've taken two of the jaws out so that I can put uh, the, the, the actual briar in here to begin drilling out. I'll, I'll use a drill chuck over here and uh, use it, you know, chuck in the drill bits or whatever and drill it out, uh, the tobacco chamber and the air hole. Uh, when I'm through with that, when I'm working on, I also make my most all of my own stems, especially the color of acrylic. I'll change it out and use something like what's called a Beal collet chuck. And this thing right here is, is great in, in holding the smaller pieces uh, like, the, like the stem. So I use that. Uh, back over here is, uh, this is a sharpener that I have. It's a Tormek uh, Super Grind 2000 sharpener. I have right here, this is a uh, spindle sander I've used from time to time. That's one of the things I use on the very first pipe I made, but I very rarely use it on the pipes anymore have a grinder right here. Oh, and over here I have in this drawer my stock of that acrylic the, uh, for the, these are, are blanks. And a little secret here, I get this from my woodcraft store and these are actually pin blanks for pin turning, but I use them for making stems uh, that people want. Matter of fact, you saw something like this uh, uh, for, for Sarge on the pipe that I did for him. That was the same material that I uh, use, Metamorphous. And uh, here's something really unusual. This one right here is actually made of impregnated coffee beans into the acrylic. 
and I don't know when I'm going to use it, but I will eventually get around to uh, to using that. Uh, let's see. This this right here, this is interesting. This is an old Kennedy tool chest. This is what uh, I inherited from my wife's dad when he passed away. He had a he had a little tiny shop. They did a lot of work on guns and everything, so I've got this old thing. It's got a lot of a lot of his old tools in it. Look at all these things. Look at these screwdrivers. Just some things I've just kind of kept in there. And I will use from time to time, but I never will get rid of that. And uh, let's see. I've got I've got another box I meant to show you down there, but I'm not gonna you don't have to go back down. I've got a whole box of briar that I use, which are blocks like this. Somebody had questioned me recently. Uh, do I do I make my pipes out of briar or, or, or other woods? 99% uh, of my pipes are made out of briar. I think there's one pipe I made recently for Meersham Man, that big giant bowl. I use cherry for it, but that that I, I tell people that that's what it what it is. And uh, so if I don't say all the pipes, then then all the pipes are made out of briar. What I'm working on uh, on Monday when I get back in here is a pipe for. None other than Nicholas, the Polish piper, and uh, he wants a St. Paddy's Day pipe with the colors of the Irish flag, which are going to be green, white, and kind of that reddish orange color. And uh, the wood here, um, this is uh, lignum vitae, or green heart. This is holly, and this is paddock right here, and it's flanked on either side by some layers of ebony that I'm using. As you can see, I haven't turned the rest of the bowl, but I will be chucking it up over there tomorrow and uh, on Monday, uh, depends on when you're watching this, and and uh, make the pipe. So there you go. This is this is kind of the area where I do, I've got all my stains and dyes and everything over here that I uh, use, and uh, so there you go. And I have my Listerine there whenever I smoke a pipe and <laughs> I want to make sure I've got a good fresh breath when I when I leave the shop. Okay, so there it is. Thank you again, Mark Balkovic, for that wonderful, wonderful pipe. Uh, and thank you, Jay uh, Dig Zachex, for the, the uh, pipe rack. And I hope you enjoyed uh, the tour of the Joe Case Pipes Workshop. And thank you again for all the wonderful orders. I really, really, from the bottom of my heart, appreciate it. Thank you so much. God bless you, and we'll see you next time.